What skills and supports are needed for a student to perform well in a unit based on the three dimensions of the next generation science standards and the project based learning? They're on task and working together. So tell me something about what scientists do. They discover new things that other people might not have been able to discover. Can you give me an example? Like planets. Mm -hmm. And if there's any more planets past Pluto and things like that. In the previous video, we met James, a curious, creative, and intelligent student who blossomed with the Red Winged Blackbird Science Unit. How are you doing, guys? Good. We saw James grow his science interest and identity and develop agency as a learner. We're not close enough to identify if they're actually a red or blackboard, but right. they kind of look like crows. James responded to the student-centric nature of NGSS, which required him to be an active learner. But what about other students in the classroom? When it is hiding its epaulet, it means that it's calm and peaceful. All kids bring diverse strengths, interests, and experiences with STEM as well as relationships to school learning. Oh, there we go. That's a beak close up. And when identifying birds, it's really important to look at the beak. Those are key features that help us determine what the bird might eat. Meet Ellen, another student in James's class. What do you notice, Ellen? I noticed that it's pointed at the Ellen loves Taylor Swift, glitter, and reading chapter books. She loves literacy especially, and takes great pride in knowing how to spell words. Where else do we see him? What about that bird right there? She has a strong identity as a learner because she has built her understanding of learning as having the correct answer, something usually she can do. Have any of you seen red-winged blackbirds around here? Ellen can hold back, though, when she isn't confident of the answer, and she can be shy in the group. So what about the females? Have you seen the female blackbirds, too? Mm -mm. In this unit, Ellen initially is hesitant to participate because there are no formulas to follow, nor does she have enough experience and certainty with the content or the process. The open-endedness means that there is less emphasis on acquiring facts and ideas to memorize and reproduce. Sometimes you see birds in the winter and you think, well, those birds aren't migrating, so they might be birds that don't migrate and are adapted to the cold. She remains quiet when the discussion revolves around something with which she is unfamiliar. She accesses prior experiences and steers the conversation to something she knows a lot about. In this case, goldfinches. We have a bird feeder in our backyard, and during the summer it comes. So you put seed out for the goldfinch, and then it comes to feed on the seed? Do a lot of goldfinches come? Sometimes only like one or two at a time. So do the males and the females look the same? No. How do they look different? I think the females are like a light brownish color. As the unit progressed, however, the PBL focus on solving problems and explaining phenomena grew on Ellen. How would we define that part? Go ahead, Ellen. They could call to their mate. And she became a leader in the classroom. Calls to attract a mate. Ellen realized that figuring it out offers a big reward, even though it requires more risk. What do you notice about the nest? Lily. Yeah, the nests are made out of crazy sticks. That's a good observation. Um, pick someone, Lily. Um, I noticed that um, the red bean blackbirds made, make their nests of toggles. Why might they do that? <gasps> to protect their eggs from predators. That's a good observation. Pick someone else to notice something. They build it in the grass because most birds live in the trees and the predators will probably check their first. Ellen enjoyed analyzing and turning over the evidence, looking for clues to see what story they tell. I do stars for every single bird that I find, so I just wrote down five stars because I saw five all over there. For example, she tried to figure out why male birds look different from the females, an alignment to the core idea about traits having functions for survival, and the cross-cutting concept of structure and function. Anyone else have observations to share? Everybody should have a couple on their clipboard. It's either calling for the for help or attracting the female. One of my observations was um, when the red ring blackbirds fly, they flap a few times and then they like soar. Ellen wanted to explain why the males at the marsh look different from each other, and some birds seem to have thicker feathers than others. This is another idea in the NGSS 
having to do with how organisms interact with their environment to meet their needs. One of my observations was that all of the male's epaulets are different. Some have like more red on the top than the bottom and some have like just one stripe of yellow and one little stripe of red. Maybe because so the females can like tell their male apart from the other males. Ellen also found that the uncertainty in problems that involve traits and heredity is intriguing. I noticed that it was very cold out, so I was wondering if maybe the red-winged blackbirds had like thicker feathers than other birds do. In prior years, Ellen believed she wasn't as good at science as she was in other areas of school, and thus was less interested in it. But this year, in fourth grade, the PBL design and three-dimensional learning kindled Ellen's interest in science. Um, it might look like they're puffing up their epaulets and squawking to get other birds to come and help the them. The birds could be still friends with their epaulets up, but they might be attacking like a, um, like a owl. The teacher's goals for Ellen were to bring her out of her comfort zone and to give her opportunities to test predictions and ideas about which she was unsure. Um, they're epaulets, which are bright red and yellow. Okay, what do you think those are for? Um, scaring off predators. I noticed that the birds are mostly only in the grassy areas, and I noticed that all the epaulets are different. Ellen began to express ideas about which she is uncertain through asking questions and explaining unfamiliar natural events. These are supposed to be like claws, and when they're up, that means they, um, like, I need some space. And then when I bend them down, it'll be like more friendly, socializing. Ellen's mom, a physician's assistant, remembers being similarly inspired in the seventh grade. I do remember in, se in seventh grade taking my first real science courses and doing well, and my mom sitting me down and saying, now this, this is the future. These careers are, for, are, the, are the future and there aren't many women doing them and you could be one of them. And so how about you and I design this course of, of action wherein you end up in one of these professions. The mix of practices, problems and ideas open a new identity for Ellen as a science student and as a learner.